Hi, I'm Jet Cuso, and welcome to Jet Cuso Season 2, Armored Appliance, where we spent all of our hair dye budget on lighting. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna be unboxing and reviewing this Bakugan Pro Armored Alliance starter set. This is the one that they call the Rapid Fire deck because it uses a new Bakugan TCG mechanic called Rapid Fire. Uh, I totally have not opened this already. It's never been opened. It's totally sealed. I'm definitely gonna have to use scissors. I haven't opened it already. Let's get into it. <sighs> okay, here we are. Bakugan Pro Armored Elite Starter Set. Bakugan Pro is the new branding for the actual TCG. Yeah, Spin Master has remembered that Bakugan has a TCG. It's great. Uh, but let's, uh, let's get into this. I can just... I haven't opened this. I need to use scissors because I have not opened this already. Tape cutting noise, tape cutting noise, tape cutting noise. There we go. I haven't opened this already. Uh, okay. Set that aside. In Jet Kuso Season 2, we don't throw things off a frame. Nothing explodes in Jet Kuso Season 2. There's probably gonna be an explosion there. The first thing we see is this little piece of art uh, on the front that shows Dragonoid. Uh, and what I'm going to be doing for, uh, for this video is I'm going to talk about a Bakugan, and then I'm going to talk about the cards for that Bakugan's attribute. Because I've actually, oh, stuff's just falling out all over the place. I've actually already reviewed this Pyrus Trox once before uh, in the last Armored Alliance unboxing. I'm not crazy about the design. I think he's a bit too round, but I do think it's creatively designed uh, at the very least. One thing I like about it more than anything else is how evenly balanced it is, which I think will lead to something that's really, really easy to roll. Now this Bakugan does kind of pop off his core really easy sometimes if it isn't getting it dead center. And I think a lot of that is because of the, not magnet strength, but because of how round he is. It's just really easy for him to roll forward and disconnect from that magnet. One of, I think, the only valid reasons to use this Pyrus Trox is because of his damage rating. Uh, you know, he doesn't have great cores, it's just Green Fist Shield, which aren't very powerful for the TCG, and his B power is only 100, which is insanely low, but he has 10 damage, and his Evo, as we'll see, I might as well just go ahead and get into the cards now, uh, another weird factory defect, uh, this pack already seems to have been torn open as if someone impatiently uh, unboxed it before they were slated to start filming, but that didn't happen, so don't worry about it. Kind of expensive, uh, at five cost, still only 200 B power, but it doubles his damage up to 20. The only real reason to use this Bakugan, at least as far as I can tell, is for a strategy they often call Mac Mock. That refers to uh, the hero card Mac, uh, who's just He's just a boy, and then Might of Sindius, M O C, Might of Sindius. So, Mac Mock. They change the effect so that highest damage wins the battle instead of the highest B power, how it normally is. Dark Rage is a new card in Armored Elite that says highest damage wins the battle and it gives the opponent minus five damage. Although this would not necessarily normally be a smart choice to run, uh, because you're only going to be able to win a couple battles with it when you have Might or Mac in hand. Uh, now that you can build decks with Dark Rage as well, that makes this Bakugan far more valid than he otherwise would be. So let's just go ahead and start breaking down the cards that come with Trox. Okay, so here's our cards. So we've got two of the Trox Evos that we've already talked about, then two Pyru Cannons, which are uh, a Pyrus only Baku here, Two cost, 100 B, two damage. Not actually that good in my opinion. I don't, I just don't think that's worth putting in a deck, but there are better Baku gear than that. Dragonoid Skater Supreme, and it has the rapid fire effect. The second rapid fire card you play this turn is free. So since it's a rapid fire card, if I played one of these, 
in a turn, right? I could then immediately, for free, play another one. And there's a lot of different rapid fire cards that do a lot of different things for Pyrus and Darkus. I'm wearing my glasses! Crap! Huh? How long you Since been we started those? recording this part of the show! Dang! People are gonna know my vision isn't perfect! <laughs> Next up we have another rapid fire card, which only gives you plus 5 damage, but since it's rapid fire, you can chain it off of other cards for free. Uh, there's two of those. Pyrus Scorch. Pyrus Orch? Pyrus Corch. Pyrus Scorch. Pyru, it's only one cost three damage, it's not very good. Um, then only one Molten Stomp, which is a fascinating card if you ask me. Each player discards their entire hand, then draws three cards. That's neat. That's gonna be really good potentially against control decks, but at the same time, if they happen to have a bad hand, it's just helping them out. Uh, so maybe that could be good, but that's all of the uh, solely Pyrus cards that come in this deck. So let's move on. Uh, let's take a look at Halcor, our Ventus box. I, mm, mm. There he goes. Uh, Greenfish Shield. So let's get this going, see what this guy looks like, see what he does. Halcor, there he is, he's present. He's green, it's Core Halcor. There was no Core Halcor in the uh, Battle Planet in the last season. There was, it, it just didn't exist, it was only the Ultra. I think it's really cute. You flip out his tail, he looks really good. I like it. How does he close? This one's a little floppy, a little shaky, kinda, kinda wobbles a little bit, a little bit rattly, if you can he seems to roll okay. Magnet strength is actually really good. That's a nice snap. It's good. Look, he flops over, he face plants. Ow, poor guy. All right, let's talk Ventus. We've got Ventus Halcor here. The first card, Hyper Halcor, three cost Evo, 800 B, eight damage. When another player plays a flip card, you may play this for free. That's so weird. <laughs> But it's uh, gross, because there's only one of them in the deck. So you're gonna have to buy card packs to supplement that to actually make that good at all. Not a very powerful Evo though, but you know, free effect isn't bad. And the damage is pretty good as well. Ventus, Ventu Stink, Ventus Ink, Ventu Stink. Some of these card names are really bad <laughs> and confusing. Uh, it shows this little plant Bakugan, which has yet to be released, uh, just stinking up a Pegatrix. Please, Baku Girl, don't kill me for saying that sentence out loud. Oh, ooh, our first flip card of the deck, Natural Defenses. It's a uh, three cost stop Pyrus or Darkus, energize this uncharged. This is uh, basically, there was another card that does the same thing in the old set, stop Pyrus or Darkus, but it was only a two cost and it was, only a one cost. it was only a one cost and you weren't able to energize it. So it's more expensive, but you get more energy, which is gonna be good for your turbo. It comes with two of those. Uh, then we got <laughs> Baku Bite! Harm! Uh, 4 cost, 9 damage. It's really interesting there's a uh, card that gives you so much damage in a Ventus deck. And that's all of our Ventus cards. Uh, not a huge Ventus presence, uh, but some good supplementary stuff, I guess. Darkest, here's our Ultra Darkest Baku. Gone. This is my song that I sing for Darkest Bakugan. It's a new thing I'm doing. I'm doing little songs. I'm gonna do sing songs for all of my ultras. These are just the great new features you get in Jekusa Season 2! I was about to actually flip that, and I got really scared because I was gonna have to clean it up, and there was just lights all over the place, and I was very worried. There is no table flipping in Jekusa Season 2! Okay. Darkest Ragnarite Ultra. Uh, we got some cores. Got some move, move guys. Fell on the dog. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I love the Ultra Dragonoids from uh, Armored Alliance. Yes, that's a flip. One of my
one of my favorite things about the new Dragonoids. And I'll do uh, I'll do a quick little visual. Oh crap! They all just. Oh man. <laughs> okay. Um. I need to flip it over to the other side. Okay. Okay, good. Thank goodness I have a Dragonoid in there. Okay, there you go. There you go. No problem. Oh, I need that one. Okay, there you go. Okay, here. You can stay down there. One thing that you'll get on all of these old Dragonoids uh, are, are these things. These dumb, stupid horn things that stick out on the sides of the Bakugan that I guess are there so it'll stand up and not, like, fall over so it'll flip better, but it totally sacrifices being able to roll in any kind of an interesting way. I mean, they do stand up, they're more stable than this one, this one's way more wobbly, I'll admit that, but it, the difference is ridiculous in, like, look. This, this new one looks so much better, so incredibly better than either of these two, especially the first Ultra Dragonoid that just had, like, these huge thighs and, like, these, like, pitiful little baby arms. But this ain't, we don't want baby arms. We know baby games. This is Bakugan Pro. Zoom in on that. This is a zoomed in. Okay, zoom else. out and zoom back, back in. Bakugan Pro. No baby games. So we don't want baby games. We don't want baby arms. Get out of here. We need big boy arms. Like these. These are big boy arms for men. And like, you know, women and girls and people of other demographics. Because, you know, it's an inclusive uh, series. I mean, it even says on the sticker at Target. Gender neutral five. Gender neutral five. That's Bakugan. That's Bakugan to a T. No doubt about it. One of the thing about this little Dragonite Ultra is he can do spins. Crap, if I got that first try, I was gonna scream and then leave. And I was gonna break my no table flipping rule immediately. <laughs> okay. He almost did what he did in that commercial. He almost did. <gasps> the commercial. I'm in the commercial. We'll have to make a video about that. Bakugan, the ninja kids are ready to and Paxton has a secret weapon. Uh, yeah, this whole, this, uh, this little spin in the, in the new Bakugan commercial for Armored Alliance, for Baku Gear, uh, the Dragonoid does a little spin around a table. And, uh, that's me. That's my hands. That's not Ninja Kids Paxton. That's me. That's me. Those are my hands. That's my spin roll. Because, uh, they needed someone who could do, uh, spin trick shots. And I can. Uh, as not very well exemplified by right now. Um... <laughs> hey! Bakugan! The ninja kids are ready to brawl, and Paxton has a secret weapon! Welcome to Yakuza Season 3, we flip tables all the time! Darkest time! Let's get bad, let's get mean, darkest time. Hyper Dragon and Ultra. 2 cost, 700B, 8 damage. All of these Bakugan have ridiculously high damage, which is strange, considering a lot of the cards in the set are also damage buffs, and it doesn't have Dark Rage in it, which is probably not going to do very well against a deck that's running like any flips, basically. But I think if we supplement this with highest damage wins cards, this could actually turn into a really good deck. Interesting card, uh, a super rare right here, five cost, shake and break. Uh, it shows uh, Alcor uh, potentially ripping Centipod in half, which is upsetting to contemplate. Uh, but it is a rapid fire card and it lets you destroy a hero, which is not super necessarily useful because heroes aren't crazy huge in the game right now. Um, but we'll see. Dark Daggers, another Baku Gear card. Four cost, 200B, five damage. It's good for damage, good for Mac Mock, uh, but it's just not giving us that B power boost that we really need. Now this one, Scorching Swords, is at least cheaper and it gives Shadow Strike. Uh, that's gonna be really good if you're running a deck that has Helix Cores that uh, give a minus to your damage because then you'll be able to uh, just negate that damage debuff. It's also going to be real good against Ventus. Shadow Strike is always good against Ventus because Ventus doesn't really buff their B that much. Baku Crusher. 
Uh, a lot of cards have Baku in the name this time. Was there, there weren't a lot of Baku cards last time, I don't know, whatever. Three cost, plus 300 B power, plus three damage. Okay, <laughs> two of those. Dark Sledge. This is where it starts getting really interesting with Baku here. When you play this, choose a player to discard two cards. That's not bad at all. Two of those. This is, okay, now we're getting into one of the coolest new cards, I think. I'm so excited for this. This is the card that really makes Rapid Fire good, along with some of the Evos that you can play with Rapid Fire. Twilight Axes. Four cost, not very expensive. Rapid Fire, the second Rapid Fire card you play this turn is free. So you can play this card for free. First turn, potentially, if you're chaining it off of a Rapid Fire card that's a uh, one cost, like a uh, Pyro Scorch. It's very low damage, but it's only one cost. That's gonna be what lets you play those other Rapid Fire cards really early, ridiculously cheap, and start buffing yourself up really fast. It only comes with one Twilight Axis card in the entire deck, which is really sad. If this came with e at least two, ideally a full playset, it would be kind of an amazing uh, investment, because, you know, it, it would be amazing. It only comes with the one, so you're gonna have to buy AV packs or an entire another starter deck to get more of these. Or you can do what I'm gonna do and uh, run proxies until uh, AV comes out and we can actually buy more cards. All right, now that we have looked at the Pyrus cards, Ventus cards, and Darkest cards, let's take a look at dual faction cards. What? That's a new thing. Uh, these cards are Pyrus Darkest dual faction cards. So if you have a Pyrus Bakugan and a Darkest Bakugan on your team, you can use these cards in uh, in your strategy, in your deck. So let's break these down and see what we got. Pyru Portal, two costs, stop non Pyrus and non Darkest. We got two of these, not a bad flip. These actually came in handy really nicely uh, during the Invitational Championship. We got two of those. Uh, I love this card art a lot because it shows small Bakugan, it's a hero card. Nilius Troublemaker, three cost. It's a rapid fire card, plus two to your Bakugan attacks. Not super powerful. <laughs> Raging Darkness, three cost, 10 damage. This deck does so much damage, and I don't know why. I don't know why it needs to do that much if the B power is so low. It's not a very well-balanced deck. Uh, Shadow Flame, Rapid Fire. Uh, this one gives you Double Strike and Shadow Strike. That's pretty good. Darkest Ash. Uh, this does, friggin' is this the exact same thing as uh, Pyro Scorch? Oh, okay. This is basically the same thing as uh, Pyro Scorch. Uh, but it has the rapid fire effect. So even though it's the same cost because it's dual faction, because your deck building is limited by having to use both of these factions, uh, it ends up being a little bit more powerful, which is the case with all of the dual faction cards. Okay, so now that we know everything that's in the deck, is it any good? The answer is kind of. Not really, but kind of. It has a lot of really good cards. I think Titan Trox might be really good situationally. Um, I know that Dragonoid Skater Supreme is going to be essential in Rapid Fire decks. Molten Stomp is a really interesting card. Uh, most of the Pyrus Darkest cards are pretty good. Shadow Flame is good. Darkest Ash is good. It's a very interesting deck and it has a lot of cards that are going to be really good, like Twilight Axes, and obviously it's got way, way too much damage emphasis. Almost half of the cards in the deck are damage buffs and not B buffs. There's almost nothing in this deck to actually make you more powerful. The Baku Gear do it a little bit. It's so low on B power that if you actually play this deck on its own, it's probably never even going to win a battle. What this really needs is it needs to be supplemented with uh, Mac Mock Rage cards. So Might of Cindius, Mac, and Dark Rage. All of the cards that say uh, highest damage wins instead of highest B power, those are gonna be your really, really essential cards to start fitting into this deck in place of all of those crazy damage buffs. Then I think you might start actually having a pretty decent deck. I think it's at least a very big improvement off of a lot of the starter decks we had in uh, 
battle planet in the last season. So I think they're going somewhere cool. I haven't taken a look at a lot of the other starter decks, but I like where things are going. I like these Bakugan, and I definitely think it's worth picking up if you want to start building a rapid fire deck. Hey, we're rolling. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching uh, my unboxing of the Bakugan Pro Armored Elite Rapid Fire Fury Starter Deck. Subscribe to me on uh, YouTube, uh, like this video, hit uh, the little bell icon so you can get a notification every time I post a new video. Thank you so much to my patrons Verona OC and my new patron Tristan Wakely for supporting me and supporting the stuff I make. If you want to help support me so I can make more videos more often and even better as we go into Jitkuzo Season 4, check me out on Patreon. I would really, really, really appreciate the support. But hey! Thank you so much for watching. This is Jet Kuso, and I'll see you next time. Hoof!